Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Endless Legend modded with improved AI. Some people at the end of the last game asked for the Ardent Mages, some people wanted to see a diplomatic victory, I figured those are both things we can do. I haven't done a diplomatic victory in a while and I don't think I've done one at all in this series, so that'll be uh, interesting. So what uh, what is the deal with the Ardent Mages, because we haven't played them before in this series. Uh, number one, the Ardent Mages have figured out how to, it says here, manipulate the magic properties of dust. Uh, basically the Ardent Mages are spellcasters, they're wizards, they have magic, uh, but if, you, if you're if you not familiar with the lore of the game world, basically what dust actually is, is uh, very powerful and versatile nanomachines created by a very technologically advanced precursor race that now has apparently disappeared from the universe altogether, called the Endless. Uh, and so basically what happened here is some ardent mages accidentally figured out how to make the nano machines do some things, and because they don't understand how they're doing it, and nobody else really understands how they're doing it, they use the word magics and spells, and because, you know, any sufficiently advanced technology, anything you don't understand, basically magic, right? So we have these arcana. Each one of these things, there's five of them, there's three that we can research, which is what these three are, and then there's two that we start with. Uh, give us access to a pillar, you can see at the bottom here of the of this tooltip. A pillar, which is a structure we can plant on the world map, it lasts for 10 turns, and it has some effect on the tile that it is on and on surrounding tiles. And an incantation, which is a spell that we can actually cast on enemy units in combat. Some of them are incredibly powerful. We'll talk in a little bit more detail about them as we approach them on the tech tree. Uh, but a lot of our gameplay is going to revolve around using pillars and arcana, or pillars and incantations, effectively. Uh, we also have a number of techs in our tech tree that will upgrade the level of our pillars and the level of our spells. These are important. Some of the spells really like gain a huge amount of effectiveness when leveled up. Um, also, we're real like sort of like edgy S and M kind of flavor, so we have things that are called like the Panosphere. Um, we have units, we'll talk about our units when we're doing actual combat, and the only techs we start with for free are the Arcana of Agility and the Arcana of Matter. Uh, we'll talk about those in a second once we've actually founded our city. Also, before we start, what's a diplomatic victory? SB, I hear you asking, I hear you cry, and I'm here to answer you. A diplomatic victory is a thing that often has a tooltip, doesn't right now for some reason. Uh, the deal is, there are diplomatic points. Right now, we have zero of them. We have to accumulate a certain number of them, uh, and if we do that, we instantly win the game. I believe the number is 2,500. Uh, we'll get some diplomatic points just from knowing other players. Uh, if you, For each other player that you've met, you get diplomatic points each turn based on your current relationship with them. Uh, war and Cold War are each worth one point per turn. Peace is worth two points per turn, and Alliance is worth four points per turn. Um, if you just did some quick math, you're probably like, what the hell, man? There's no way you're going to build up 2,500 diplomatic points uh, before the game ends. And that's because that's not the only way to get them. And in fact, it's not the way that we will get the majority of our points. Uh, you also get, whenever you... Uh, well, I guess I don't have a player to click on, so I can't show you what I'm talking about. But whenever you propose a deal with another player, um, one of the ones with the little favor bar where they can accept or deny, uh, if they accept it, you get a diplomatic point for every five points of influence that you spent to offer the deal. So most of the diplomatic points we get over the course of the game are going to come in the end, or come at the end in a big flurry of deal making. Uh, so our goal for now is just to survive. Create an empire that's large enough, powerful enough to survive the predations of the AI, and once we're secure, we will turn our attention toward trying to become deal makers. So this is a lot of anomalies right here. Wow, that's nuts. Okay, and we can see another player is right there, because the fog, uh, things bleed through the fog a little bit. Well, let's search this ruin real quick. Nothing. Uh, let's hope that's not an omen of things to come. Let's fan out a little bit here. So, I mean, obviously we're settling around the big street. Wow, this is, there's like a chain of anomalies wrapped all the way around this ruin. Obviously we're going to be settling somewhere in the chain of anomalies area. Let's just, uh fan out and see if we can't get a little bit more detail on the world around. Uh, we might even have coast. This could just be a lake. But that might be real coast. I mean, even if it is real coast, we can't take advantage of it. It's too far from our optimal settling location. So, like, that tile 
would be pretty okay, right? 22 food, 10 industry. Wow, Jesus. Yeah, and then we... Um, because of the way pillars work, which I'll talk about in a second after we found it, uh, you end up building your cities in kind of strange shapes as the Ardent Mages, so we... Uh, it's going to be interesting. We'll see, we'll see how we end up developing our city. Really, nothing in the second ruin as well. That's unfortunate. Alright, let's take a quick look at the resource outlays. I think... I, I doubt we're going to find anything that beats settling on four anomalies. That's completely insane. Uh, 8, 18, 12, 5 is not bad. Um, yeah, so if we build here, and then expand out to here quickly... Actually, it might be better, despite the fact that this is a much larger amount of total resources, we might be better off settling here for the huge amount of industry, which will make it really easy to build a burrow out to here and get all this extra food. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Let's go, let's take 18 industry. I can't believe this, this is insane. Alright, uh, so we're gonna do pretty standard stuff here. Okay, so now we can we can take a look at the pillars. Uh, our first two arcana give us the Pillar of Knowledge, which gives plus two science on the tile that it is on and on every tile adjacent. So we're going to lay one of these down for sure. I'm going to put it right here. The tile that has the pillar on it cannot be built on. You can't build a burrow on top of a pillar. But remember, the pillars are temporary. So right here, it'll give us... Bam, you can see... One, two, three, four tiles of value. <clears throat> so this is giving us eight extra science per turn. Uh, we had 16 science before. That increased our science output by 50%. That's not bad. Uh, if we expand out to here like we intend to, uh, within the first 10 turns, that's probably not going to happen. Uh, <clears throat> we'd pick up another tile that has the bonus on it. And so... Uh, because of the way the pillars spread out their bonuses, you don't end up really wanting to build triangles. You want to build your cities so that you can get these, like, arcs around a pillar dropping spot. And that requires a little bit of intellect um, be expended on figuring out how you're going to shape your cities and where you're going to drop pillars in the future. And it's all stuff we will get to. For now, let's just focus on winning the game. So, today's legendary deeds are gather 30 units of a luxury to get 130 emeralds and destroy 10 armies to get tactical training. So, we cannot get this, and we might get this, and even if we don't, uh, I won't be heartbroken because 130 emeralds is basically only trade fodder. Alright, we should get our first couple of researches up very quickly. And what with our 18 starting, or our uh, <coughs> 24 base science here, it's pretty fantastic. Uh, and our faction quest, I believe, is going to ask us to parley with villages, so we definitely want to pick up Langley Square first. Alright, so parley with two villages, get 15 titanium. Well, let's try to find two villages. We don't yet see the village in our home region. So let's see if we can figure out where that is. Um, this looks like it might actually be coast. Yeah, this is actual coast, so this is the, the oceans down here. We will not be able to access the ocean from our first city. It's just too far away. But we might be able to settle our second city on the coast. I think we're going to go... There's a break in the cliff face here. Just kind of fan out and look for villages and ruins and stuff, as we usually do. Uh, okay, it looks like we have titanium. This is the village, because it's the only tile that isn't revealed yet. But also you can see their outlying villages. Or the outlying buildings around the edge of the tile. So we have titanium and glass steel. What? This region is fantastic. No uh, no luxuries, but, you know, that's not unusual. Very often don't get to start with a luxury. Alright, let's have a chat with these villagers. What do we get? Bos. So the assimilation bonus for Bos is plus 5% food for each village. Uh, 15 titanium. Well, or 8 titanium, rather. I don't think that's going to happen. We're probably going to have to pacify this village through force. Uh, okay, some hernas down here that we can talk to. Come on, lucky ruins. Oh, one thing I didn't talk about is uh, the pillars. 
Uh, you can lay down more than one pillar at a time, but each pillar cost a pillar costs more for each pillar that's already on the map. So our first pillar costs 40 dust, the second one is 105. You can see the rate of gain is pretty sharp in the prices. Uh, so it's probably not going to be a thing very much in the early game for us to have two pillars down at once, but we'd like to get there. So you really want to try to get your dust economy to a place where you're constantly running a fairly large surplus. It's more important than it is with a lot of the races, I think. Okay, there are rumors of rogue troops nearby. Go to this ruin and search it to get free units. Okay, I will. Also, from that village we got the quest to give these guys eight emeralds. Well, it's not impossible, but it doesn't sound terribly likely that we will be doing that. Uh, yeah, I guess let's go over here and talk to these guys. Okay, no army in Par no enemy army in Parandy uh, looks fairly likely. I guess we can't see the full border, so there might be a, a player, like, right up there. Okay, we finished... Wow, we finished Mel Foundry already. This is, like, a pretty good starting location, I'm not gonna lie. So that would be seven turns. We might not actually end up doing that, but I'm gonna queue these things up. Uh, you... What is next for us? Probably Dust. So that we can try to have, uh, try to get to a place where we're using more pillars. Alright, let's search the ruins here. And discover these rogue troops. Which is to say, free troops. And merge them into the hero's army to cut down on the amount of upkeep we're paying for them. And now we have to take our rogue troops and search some ruins. Well, actually, we don't. I mean, we don't have to search the ruins with the rogue troops. I'm gonna go ahead and search the ruins with these guys. Oh no, an enemy army! We'll deal with it in a second. So we got 15 glass steel. If we beat these guys who came out of the ruin, we'll get 15 wine. And our hero leveled up. So. We start with army damage boost 2, which is powerful, and especially. Uh, good in the early game, when plus 8 damage is often increasing a unit's damage by like 20 to 40 percent. And science boost 1, which is not a bad trait, but, you know, boost 1. Uh, it's not as good as it could be. So I think we're going to try to make this hero a commander rather than a governor. It is worth noting that the Ardent Mage faction tree is very strong. A lot of flat science bonuses, followed by a large percentage science bonus. So, uh, pretty good. And this hero is a support, and support units probably have the worst class tree. Uh, but we still get plus defense, uh, plus initiative, and eventually plus quite a lot of life. So I don't feel too bad about this. Uh, I think support is probably the worst class tree, and still it is quite good. Alright, uh, can we reasonably win this? Oh, it's an orc. Yeah, low health, low defense. Here's the thing about Ardent Mage units. We have 92 life and 20 defense, right? Not awesome, but 48 attack and 50 base damage is completely bananas. Uh, as you can see, that's enough, to, that's enough attack that we will be dealing full damage to everything's defense basically all the time, and we get bonus attack from having lower health. So we are probably going to two-shot this guy uh, pretty easily. Ow! He got damage and a half on us. What a jerk. And then we get to search the ruins for real. And get five titanium as well. Um, so we've gotten a lot of strategics quickly, which I don't really love. I prefer to find luxuries, and especially a lot of early dust is really powerful. All right, the Hernos are from a village called Ad, uh, from a village in a region called Adoran. Find the village and parlay with them to find out what's going on. Now, because I played a hell of a lot of this game, I happen to know that when we go over here, we're going to get ambushed. So I might want to just take our uh, take our hero's army and head that way, because we're going to have to we're going to have to fight an ambush force. So what do we? We are at ninety percent right now. All right, I'm going to use our die and our spices. I'm going to hold off on the wine. 
Uh, we'll use the line when we're about to settle a second city to guarantee we remain fervent over the second city settle. Because right now, spices plus dyes is enough approval to push us to fervency. It has been a pretty good start so far. Alright, the hero army is... I was going to go over here and parlay, but I think we should probably get our faction quest moving. Our faction quest isn't the easiest, and a lot of the steps have kind of lackluster rewards, but you do eventually get uh, extra levels for your spells and pillars, and like I said before, that can be incredibly powerful. So we'll just meet up over here, prepare for battle. Uh, so, where do we want to... Do we see a second settling location that's really exciting yet? Silali so has some pretty good land. Um, it also has some pretty bad land. You can see around here, there's tiles that don't even have the normal base 3 resources on them. But I probably want it to be a coastal settle. Because, as we saw, if you were watching the, uh, the last couple of games in the series, the difference between getting out on the water early and not getting out on the water early is so huge. So we can settle down around this anomaly, use these ice sculptures to anchor a city like here or here. I don't love that because that city is going to have very poor industry and just like not a huge amount of resources in total. We can hope that there's a better, a better ocean settle over here maybe. But basically the answer is no. I don't see a second settling location that I'm like really excited about. Okay, and we may as well merge these units up, because first of all, it'll be good for our money. We'll be paying upkeep on fewer armies. And secondly, it'll be good for our hero, because we're getting more passive XP this way. Alright, what did we finish? We finished Empire Mint. So we probably should... Uh, we don't need to get this right away. Our tech rate is still really high. Uh, let's pick up... Oh, we should pick up Alchemist Furnace, because we can get both of our... Well... We have a lot of resources already, though. Maybe... Maybe I do just pick up Public Library and this stuff to lean into the, uh, into the science thing. Because I'm thinking, like, I don't want to pick up Cultivation just yet, because I think we're likely to build a Settler soonish. Uh, even so, though. Think about how many citizens we could have. This is probably right. And it's looking like blue is our only neighbor uh, in this whole arc. So we need to check west and see if there's a player over here. And that'll help us inform our settling decisions. These guys want me to come back with a an army that has three minor faction units in it. Well, that seems very unlikely. Ooh, wow, look at this region. Look at all these anomalies. And this would be a pretty cool settle. Unfortunately, that's kind of distant. Okay, sorry about that. I had to uh, mute the microphone for a second to deal with the fact that I am still a little bit, a little bit not feeling a thousand percent. Elise got sick and uh, maybe it may have sicked me up a little bit. So we got some blood crystal, which is fine. The Hernas hold an artifact belonging to our dead brother, the Transcendent Rod of Verda. I'm assuming he's Verda. Uh, this is a totally dope weapon that we have no hope of equipping any time in the near future because it costs Hyperion. Alright, this should be pretty easy. So the troops that we picked up are just more of the same kind of troop that we already had. Uh, this is kind of an awkward position for them. So they're going to have to go one, two, three, and then they have three range. Can we make this so that they can't shoot at us? We cannot. We only have these tiles. There's nothing we can do to stop this guy from getting shot at. So since I know this space is going to be shot at, let's put the hero there. Um, our units have three base movement speed, or three movement speed, because we have plus one battle movement over our normal base of two. And our hero has the increased fire ability. We cast a buff that gives plus 75% attack on a targeted friendly unit. Uh, I kind of hate units that have buffs, because they will prefer to buff, even in situations where, like, the game's not doing any math. 
It's just going, I have a buff, let's use buff. Um, it makes no sense in this situation to buff our uh, unit's attack, because we're already getting the best possible attack table result, uh, which is 20% chance for d uh, damage and half, 100%, uh, well, 20% chance for this, 80% chance for just normal damage. Okay, so they have to run up like this. Hero gets shot. It's not the end of the world. And unfortunately, if the unit with the buff loses its initial target, it will almost always prefer to cast a buff instead of acquiring a new target, despite the fact that casting a buff is almost never better damage than just attacking. There are not a lot of buffs in the game that, uh, that make sense to use instead of an attack in any situation where you actually could attack. Oh, poor guys. Okay. Well, we're moving our faction quest forward really quickly. What's next? Pacify five villages within your empire. So that is going to take a little bit of doing. That's, we're talking about at least three regions, because of course your first region is always going to have only one village. Uh, so, and it looks like a lot of the villages, that, a lot of the regions that we can see are one village regions. Or like, we can't, we can't tell with Silali. We haven't seen any villages. But I don't, there's not going to be two villages in this region. So at most, this is a two village region. Because there could be one here and then like one there. Uh, so this is probably something that's going to take us settling over a large number of, uh, large number of regions to, to get done. We're probably looking at at least four settles. Well, if we can find a two and a two, that would be good enough. What was it you guys wanted? Eight emeralds? We don't have that, right? Should I just attack them? Nah, that's probably not worth doing. Alright, let's go scouting, I guess. Uh, I'm going to let the burrow finish, probably, rather than switching to... Oh, hey, that finished. Cool. Rather than switching to um, the seed storage right away. And I, I'm not going to rush out a settler until I actually know where we want to settle. Let's go this way. Okay, here's another really tight cluster of anomalies. Unfortunately, again, it's in desert territory that has some pretty bad base terrain, but, uh... I mean, it's, it would be hard, it would be very difficult to be upset about being able to settle here, right? So that is... We could settle Parandi here or this end here, depending on what's on the other side of this region. We really don't have as much intel as I would like, as much as we often have in these situations. Uh, we already are kind of having a glut of things that need building, but I guess we're going to build them pretty quickly, aren't we? Yeah, we'll be done in four turns, so yeah, okay. Pick up the library. We're starting to acquire a lot of techs, and of course each tech you have drives the cost of future techs up. So at some point you definitely want to get some science buildings to offset that. Our pillar is about to expire. It will expire at the beginning of next turn. So we want to make sure we have the 40 dust prepared to uh, replace it. Okay, travel to the Goran village with only a hero and earn their respect by defeating their alpha male. I can do that. That is a thing that we can definitely do. Uh, we will, of course, cheat. Because why wouldn't you if you can get away with it? Uh, and... Okay, we're still still fervent even with the expansion because, oh, you know what? This district, um, this district lowered our approval by ten points, but then we picked up ten point or ten approval from uh, from this thing, the, the oasis that we built next to. So that district was approval neutral. All right, this is the Gorin. Yeah, this is all one region, so we don't need to try to talk to this village. Okay, blue has settled. I was going to say Blue has settled a bunch of territory, but actually it looks like Blue... This is just... This is one huge territory. So Blue might settle into Silali. Uh, I would prefer that they don't, but I don't know that there's a lot we can really realistically do about it if they want to. Like, I'm pretty sure I clicked over here. Okay. 
I think we want to settle up along this this coastline because there's some really great terrain over here. Okay, build over a total of seven anomalies in your empire. <clears throat> well, how many are we on right now? One, two, three, four, five. So if we just uh, if we just settle another city somewhere where there's two anomalies, we'll get that quest moving along. And our pillar has run out, which is what this is informing us. We do, in fact, want to lay down another pillar. And as you can see, we're already getting five tiles worth of value out of this pillar. Man, I feel really good about this start. Uh, so we do have some other things we need to research as well. We're going to want to research our first era unit because it is powerful and good. Those are the two qualities you should be looking for in a unit, powerful and good. Okay, 30 dust, I don't hate that. Lots of early dust is just, like, no matter what your what your plan is, long term or medium term, lots of early dust is just always good. Well, we see a lot of anomalies over here. In a, though, like, the way these are set up really encourages me not to settle on the coast. But maybe I'll, like, settle here and just uh, expand out into these, because we really, really do want to get some ships down if we can. Okay, so here's how we cheat. Who's ready for cheating? We pull the hero out. Parlay with the village to get the attention of their alpha male. And then as long as you initiate the attack with an army that is just a hero, you can get the quest victory. Uh, they never said that we couldn't bring reinforcements. And while we know that they meant it, we can successfully pretend that we didn't know that they meant it. So I'm going to stand over here. If we start anywhere over here, he's going to have enough movement to get to us. Because the forest is so thick on this side, uh, we'll be able to shoot at him without him being able to fight back. Because again, this is all about maximum fairness. He could go 1, 2, 3, 4 and get these guys. There's nothing we could have done to stop that from happening. And that is in fact what he will do. But as you can see, we will, uh, we will slay him trivially. We're going to lose units, like, a lot in the early game. Our units have... Our units are melee attackers that have very poor health and very poor defenses. Uh, but they're just... They're great killers. They trade very effectively. The Goran Alpha Male lies defeated, crushed by your might and cunning. How is this possible, he croaks. It's as though you had more warriors than I counted. Yep, we're now the Alpha Male. Hooray us. So we got some gold. Uh, yeah... Don't really need to do anything just yet. So we already could push for the Megapole. 16 turns. This will be a turn 29 Megapole. Um, it goes without saying that it's not a good idea to spend 16 turns doing this right now. But I'm pleased with the prospect that we will actually be able to get this pretty easily in the near future. Uh, I think we definitely want to go ahead and build our settler now. We have we have a great location to put down a city. And a great location to put down a second city. And then Parandy's like pretty good. And Oh man. I'm very pleased with how this is going so far. And then we could just merge these guys back up, which I think I will do just to lower our, uh, our dust costs, because at the rate of dust uh, accumulation we have going here, we might be able to afford a relatively early governor, which is a powerful thing. We need two more technologies to move forward. So I'm thinking it might we might want to make it these. I know, we'll, we'll come back and get this, we will. So we'll just settle the second city, kind of not ideally, on the coast. And then uh, from there, build some ships, try to get out in the water, and see if we can't snatch a fortress or two. Overall, I'm very pleased with it. And we have all this extra influence from uh, having run a die booster. Okay, so we're back down to 80%. Let's pop the Quicksilver to get us back up to 90. I'm going to hold the Blood Crystal because the Blood Crystal is theoretically more useful uh, at some future date. Quicksilver is always kind of not uh, not useful. And the 10 Approval is why you use Quicksilver. And again, we'll pop some more resources before we lay the second city down just to make sure that we stay fervent across the settle. 
Alright, plus one reinforcement position, nice and early. Probably won't matter a huge amount, but it could come into play. Alright, let's keep... let's keep Scout. I don't know how much heroes are right now, but I'm confident that we will actually be able to buy one pretty quickly. Uh, we also could buy boats, you know? That's a possibility, so, like, low 300s. By the time we, you know, by the time we get up there, it'll be low 300s. So, we have some pretty good ones available. I do love Soyala Tocho with Industry Boost 2 early in the game. That's very powerful. But there's no sense in looking through these now. It is even possible that we might end up uh, having the heroes change on us before we're in a position to buy one. So, uh, I think we probably want to settle on turn 20. Since it doesn't look like there's any competition, I'm not really rushed. And uh, at this rate, we're going to be able to do this Empire plan, which makes me very happy. Uh, this is great. This is a great position to be in. So what do we want to do now? We could go for some kind of Megapole thing. We could just build another Settler with the intent of putting down roots in Uarden and this territory on turn 20. Or, well, this one will probably be shortly after. Well, no, because we moved this guy here. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do that. That's a little bit gutsy. It's a little bit strange, but... Uh, it's maybe not the safest play ever, because we don't know what borders this region. Uh, we're going to find out. It's going to be my primary goal here. But honestly, I feel like it's uh, I feel like it's pretty strong. It's a little bit risky, but it's a play that turns our strong start into a stronger middle. And that's what you want to be doing. You want to be using any success that you get is is an engine for further success. We gotta talk to this region's village and try to make sure that we have uh, try to make sure that we have some kind of population waiting for the guy who settles in Hunter. Okay, and it is these guys. That's not awesome for us because they're really frustrating to fight with melee troops. Okay, don't put any influence in the military ministry. Man, I'm glad we talked to them now and not, like, in two turns. I'm gonna try to avoid direct conflict until we put down the city and we can use the militia against them. Alright, I have a hard time imagining that it could be correct to settle anywhere other than right here. We'll have a look around, but I expect... Alright, and there's, uh, there's Era 2 before we even get to the First Empire plan. Such is the power of the uh, Science Pillar. Okay, there's two villages in this region, that's nice. So actually, uh, Warden plus Haunter is going to get us our five villages as soon as we come back in and uh, squash these boasts. Uh, so go here, but don't actually lay down the settle. Yeah. This is actually, uh, turns out to be perfectly safe. There's nobody over here. This is kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy how good this start is. Uh, so let us pick up... Okay, what we're going to do next is we're going to go for the next pillar. This pillar gives us influence, and I don't really care about that. What it gives us in addition to influence, is the Incantation of Enervation. This is going to be the spell that we cast the most during the game by a huge margin. At level 1, it stuns a target unit and reduces its defense by 12%. At level 2, it stuns a target unit and every enemy unit adjacent to that unit and lowers all of their defenses by, I think, 15? The way you should interpret that line at the bottom, minus 12 slash minus 25%. Is it's 12% at the lowest rank and 25 at the highest, and it scales pretty linearly between those two. And I think the top level for a spell is level. Uh, the top level for an arcana is level five, because I think there's there's everything starts at level one. There's two upgrades for uh, pillars and for spells in the tech tree, and then there's I think two from the faction quest. Uh, and then after that, we will be getting this, which will give us that second level of our spells, so that we will have, we have an AoE stun and defense reduction spell 
ready to go, which will make us terrifying in combat. Now, like I said, we're going to try not to get directly into combat with these uh, crystal dudes. So let's bail out. Spend our empire plan. Get this really nice empire plan. And then... Over to here. And you... Wait, before we put anything down... How much do I want to pop? I think let's just pop everything, right? I don't know where we're going to end up approval-wise settling two cities in quick succession. Um, but we're not going to be able to pop any of these as boosters after we settle two cities, because our booster cost is going to be 20. It's 10 plus... Uh, well, it's 5 plus 5 per city that you have, so it's 10 at the start. And then. So yeah, I'm just going to crack everything. This will almost certainly keep us fervent through the settling of two cities. Is it really only 972? I guess there's not a ton of food. Huh. Well, it's a lot of dust. No two ways about that. So we're going to get a hero this turn, and then probably like a lot of heroes in the near future after that. Actually, do I want to buy... I think I want to buy out the mill foundry in this city before we buy a hero. So it just because we have so much money, and I know we'll be able to afford a hero shortly. Uh, I want to... Let's put seed storage up. I want to accelerate this city a little bit. And then we did our empire plan correctly, so we will be getting the uh, pacification of these villages. And the next thing we have to do is deal with this. So what are we building this city now? Now might not be a crazy time to go for the megapole. It says 20 turns now. That's because our population is lower. It will not actually be 20 turns. Uh... How do I want to do this? If I was going to build this, we can build it right here and grab that anomaly up there. Or build it right here and grab that anomaly. And then if we build it right here, what we can do is we can build districts here, here, and here to level it up. And that'll uh, and then build a district here. Actually, that's a little bit off. That's a little bit awkward. This, the position of this ruin makes things kind of strange. So I'm trying to think of how we can construct districts such that we're leveling up our districts, but we're also leaving a little pit in which to place a pillar. Huh. Hey, don't get me wrong, by the way. This is a really good problem to have. Which of these many locations, which of these many great, great locations is the best one for me to put my thing in? Uh... I think we should probably put it here. Because we should probably build toward this other pool of anomalies. And then we can go like here. And these three can be uh, districts. And these three can be districts. And that'll make these two level two. And it'll be easy to expand around the outer bits to level them up as well. And that gives us a nice pillar location right here. A pillar location over here. If you can't see it on the map, um, just trust me. This is gonna It's going to work out. It's going to be beautiful. Okay, in the meantime, we should try to deal with this minor faction army, but, like, I kind of just want to get this dealt with so we can move our faction quest forward. We should settle Parandy at some point in the relatively near future, but I guess as long as Blue's not settling Silali, we're not really in a hurry. Oh, and we did this. 60 dust for us. And if we produce 64 per dust per turn in any city uh, for a while, we'll get some Quicksilver, which is cool, I guess. Uh, also, we did that, so pacification, which means lots of free population for this city, which means it's going to get all this stuff done lightning fast. <sighs> Alright, well, I didn't really want to fight them over here, but it looks like we're going to have to stop them from pillaging our territory. Oh, and this was actually three villages. There was a village I didn't realize was up here. So when we settle Warden, we'll get our faction quest moved forward, so we don't have to worry about coming back for this just yet. Man, everything is coming up fantastic for us here. It's kind of crazy. Alright, and we'll get some ships out, hopefully, uh, relatively quickly, with the power of all of this dust. So there's, a, there's some territory up here that we haven't seen. It's possible that there's land over here, which means it's possible that there's resources. 
Uh, we don't see anything yet. Somebody got the uh, tactical training legendary deed. That's to be expected. Nothing we could have done about that. All right, let's drop this. Okay, our approval dropped to 98. We are we are holding steady for it. That is a lot of pearls. Man, am I gonna? I think I'm gonna do it again. I think I'm gonna delay my hero again. The thing is, this is so, it's so powerful to rush mill foundries. Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna prioritize a couple of vessels over anything else. Okay, there is in fact a ruin over here. Uh, one of the nice things about fighting people near the edge of your vision is that you can always see all of the tiles that are used in a combat. So I think actually what we're going to do is just uh, harass these guys at range. They have one movement. So I don't have to let them fight my melee fighters. Uh, you stay put unless given orders. Okay. So we can spend, we can spend a whole six round battle just shaving hit points off of these guys. Actually, I should probably just move here. Uh, there will be absolutely no con no consequences for that, and then after we've done that, we can, uh, you know, blow them up really quickly in another battle. Although, actually, it looks like our hero does enough damage that uh, that's not going to be what happens. It looks like we're just going to straight up kill one of them very easily. We could even get lucky and kill this guy. Nope, no such luck. Uh, do I want to send people in this round? How hard does he hit? 54 base damage with 56 attack. He would, yeah, he would crush us. I'm just going to do it with the ranged, the ranged unit. Alright, they attacked us. We still have our action point left. It's just a matter of preserving HP. HP is a valuable resource. Don't lose more of it than you, than you absolutely have to. Alright, so this should be totally trivial. I do wish, uh, I've, I've said this a number of times, I do wish that there was a uh, auto-resolve from here button, like that you could, you could set initial positions and tactics for your troops, and then have the game auto-resolve the battle with those starting conditions. Because it's often the case that all I need to do is issue the first turn's orders. Okay, so the region is safe. There could still be resource tiles over here, but I mean, at the very least, we have both die and titanium. We have such a good start. Alright, let's... This might be greedy. It's possible that this uh, going for this megapole is not the right play. Okay, 15 influence and 15 titanium. Make a new city the laboratory of your growing empire. Colonize a new region, settling in an area providing at least 10 science at the city's founding. Now, it doesn't have to be 10 base science from tiles. It's 10 science right now when the city is founded. So you can actually kind of cheat this by putting down a pillar and then settling in the area of the pillar. So basically, this, this is settle a city anywhere, effectively. And we'll get from that exotic alloys, the tier 3 titanium and glass steel tech. We probably still have to research tier 2 titanium and glass steel weapons, because although these weapons are extremely powerful, they're also incredibly expensive. I think a set of titanium claws, and our, our melee troops are claw troops, uh, a set of titanium claws is like 22 titanium or something. So, uh, it is probably infeasible to fit our whole army out with the tier 3 stuff. But basically the quest we just got is found a city, so I don't think we should have any problems with that. Uh, also, our pillar ran out. Well, let's just put one down, I mean. I think I may have let us go a turn without a pillar there. It's not totally ideal. We have the dust to lay down another pillar. But doing so is going to delay our hero again, and the hero's costs are rising like relatively quickly in the early game. So I think I'm going to, I'm going to stop messing with it. Let's let's actually finish a hero. Uh, 
It's a lot more time than I was hoping to have to spend. Oh, this probably has something to do with it. There we go, three turns. That's better. Still longer than I would like, but totally reasonable. Okay. Well, we are going to have to deal with this boss eventually, by the way. That's not really uh, something we can just let wander around, because they will start pillaging and generally being crappy. Ooh, 70 dust is a nice find. Uh, there are three tiers of dust that you can find at any point in the game. At the beginning of the game, the common tier is 30, the uncommon is 40, and the rare is 70. Uh, we have a new pillar. In addition to the incantation, we have this influence pillar. Uh, we don't really need to push influence too much in the early game, but every once in a while it'll be useful for pushing us over uh, over the edge from one Empire plan to another. So I know I just said all that stuff about having to deal with those guys. We'll get to it. We'll, we'll head back. We'll head back after we get this room, probably. Okay, and we'll be able to hire a hero next turn, or are we going to have to wait one more? Probably next turn. Unless their cost goes up by a significant amount between then and now. Uh, also, plus resources from strategic resource extractors is a pretty good assimilation bonus, and the Gorn would just give us plus 10% life, because we have two of their uh, two of their villages. Both totally fine. Uh, neither one a thing that we have to go for right away, I don't think. So we can, uh, we can hold off on making that decision. Alright, turn 26 is a little bit later than I would like to get our first ship out, but let's, uh, let's have a look around. I'm gonna leave that ruin for now because we really want to try to find a fortress pretty quickly. There's not gonna be a fortress in this sea region, probably. It's too small, but aha! There we go already. 20 gold, that's actually really nice. That's enough to pop a booster, there's a whole booster of gold. Okay, let's head back home. Uh, see if we can't swing past this part of Haunter just to reveal the tiles. Uh, it looks like this region is probably guaranteed to us. This region, these regions up here probably are not because this almost certainly connects. Uh, actually, we can be 100% sure. If these tiles say that they are... Oh, these are coastal waters. This actually could be a bay. It doesn't seem likely. It might just be that this body of water is, like, just large enough not to be considered a lake or something. I don't know. Should we throw another ship out before we do... Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we actually got a little bit less money than I would like, so... We do not have access to all of the heroes. I don't think we really want Army Defense Boost 2, Science Efficiency 2. Hell of the Bat has Dust Efficiency 1. Again, not great. So we'll wait one more turn and hire a better hero. Probably Soyala Tocho for the capital to push the Megapole along, and then we'll move him to somewhere else. Once he gets all that sweet legendary building XP. Well, hello, gentlemen. What's up? Easy quest? Relatively easy quest. Uh, I think we can afford to go grab this. This is, like, at the edge of our movement distance, so... 70 dust, not bad. Uh, sea ruins are a little bit better than land ruins. So you can you can expect better rewards from them more often. Okay, Hunter has burned through its basic stuff really, really quickly. So let's start producing units. We haven't actually met any other players yet, which means no other players can declare war on us yet. It also means we're not making a lot of diplomatic points, but the diplomatic points you get passively from just knowing players really will turn out to be a very small percentage of our overall. Also, I forgot to buy a hero because I was too busy talking. Um, so it's probably Tocho, right? Industry Boost 2 plus a very nice faction tree with all of the uh, industry boosting stuff in it. Uh, what are the other options? John Port has Dust Boost 3, which obviously is pretty good. Iraku is a Morgar, which means that he's good on the water. Um, but I think this Bishop Julian is... Okay, Dust Boost 1. I think it's going to be Soyala Tocho. Let's, like I said, put you in charge over here for now. That even takes the turn off the Megapole, and then when the Megapole finishes, he'll get 
almost certainly at least one level worth of XP, and then we'll move him somewhere that needs a little bit more health. Probably Warden. Alright, let's parlay with five other fortresses, shall we? Aw, oh, we can't quite get to this. Alright, let's see what we can see over here. Alright, we don't have to go all the way down there, then. Turns out, another anomaly, because there can never be enough of them. Alright, like I said, we probably still have to research this, but because we're not being pressured by any of the other players... I think we're just gonna, like, keep researching stuff. Actually, I'm even gonna do that. We have 20 titanium to, to make weapons out of if we have to in a hurry, but because we've not met another player and we have all this territory to expand over, I think I'm gonna uh, try to play it a little greedy. All right, well, we're not gonna we're not gonna take a single movement turn just to get this. Okay, bring this to the Manufactorium in Doyak. Should be easy enough. Okay, you gotta move. Uh, and that's our next fortress to speak with. So we'll actually, hmm, I wonder if we should attack, if we should turn around and get ready to fight this. Because my thinking is, I don't want this to get hit by neutrals after we control it. Um, and if we, if we get control of this by turning in the sub here and letting it get repaired, and then we attack this and take it over by force, we will actually be in control of this ocean region. And this fortress will not spawn any neutral boats that will mess with us. Okay, uh... Oh, this boarding vessel is level 2, but it is also injured. Honestly, with the level of industry that we're seeing around our empire, we might be able to just go to, uh... I, I usually build my first boarding vessels completely unupgraded, because even the most basic upgrade, um, the one that increases damage dealt to ships, really, really increases their cost. You end up getting, uh, two of those ships versus three unupgraded ships. I don't think that that is really a very good trade-off. So yeah, I think we're going to take this ship by force, even though it, even, uh, this fortress, rather, by force, even though it gives us an easy quest, just because I would really, really like to, uh, secure this ocean region quickly. Alright, you can grab a bunch of pearls on the way down there. Hunter can pop this guy out and have him join you. We are not quite ready to attack this with both of our ships yet. We need one more turn of movement. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, we start building out the burrows, right? Like, I don't really have anything else of value to do here. Building a burrow here gets us quite a lot of extra resources. It does make our approval a little trickier to manage. We could build the altar in this city. I kind of want to build the altar in Valdea to help level up the Megapole more quickly, but... The altar is uh, approval positive. Yeah, let's just build the altar. And actually, because you guys are building so effectively and we don't really need to rush you, I think I'm going to go hard on dust here, and we're going to try to get governors for the rest of our cities. Also, when this pillar expires, we'll be able to lay down quite a few more. I could lay down pillars right now. I guess this is maybe not 100% clear. I want to keep my pillar duration synced, though, because, uh, yep, that happens. Hey, where'd that ship go? There it is. I want to keep my pillar duration synced, though, so that, uh, uh wait, stop running. Oh my god, you coward. Okay, well, he's far enough away that he can't participate in the defense of this fortress. So let's, let's handle this real quick. Um, okay, if he wants to start way back there, I will also start way back. So he's going to move one, two, three, one, two, three. So we're actually in pretty good positions already. Uh, you just stay put. 
Okay, this turn we're first. I hate the fact that the tie breaking on initiative is random. That is like my least favorite thing. Okay. Uh, now that this is resolved, what I was saying is we want to keep the durations of our pillars synced. We don't want to be laying pillars down when other pillars are already running because um, we want to, whenever we lay down a new batch of pillars, we want to do it all in one turn so that we're only paying the increased pillar costs for the later pillars. If we have one down now and we lay down a second one, it's going to cost us 105. And then in two turns when this one expires, to lay down a new pillar of knowledge to replace it would also cost us 105 because we have another one running. If we lay down... If we wait and lay down two pillars on the same turn, it will be 40, 105. And then after they both expire, next time we lay them down, it will be 40 and then 105. Um, so that may not have been immediately obvious. I want to make sure that uh, everybody understands my train of thought on that one. Swing past these ruins as we're uh, heading home. All right, we hand them our vessel and we wait two turns and then we get our bat we get a fixed bathosphere back, a proper bathosphere and control of the original fortress. And what is this? This is an industry stockpile facility. That's a really useful facility. All right, we'll do our best to take over this ocean region next. On the whole though, I have a I have a real good feeling about this start. Pushing rapidly toward our second hero. Looks like they're going to be around 400-ish. So, next turn. Uh, let's grab one of these. We'll throw it to the top of the queue in this city. But it can remain at the bottom of the queue in these two. Uh, that's true. I did not do that. So, it looks like blue is expanding out into this area. Or at least thinking about it. Which is fine by me. It definitely makes the most sense for us to keep expanding west and north. Oh, he's locked into the corner by seaweed for the moment. Let's uh, wait for him to come forward a little bit before we make any crazy decisions. Alright, let him advance on us. I want the first strike to be... A little bit more controlled than it would have been there. Okay. Do we want to keep these as two separate vessels? I don't know. We're paying extra dust for their upkeep, but I guess that's not really an issue right now. And two separate vessels does give us double the coverage. It just means that we have a little bit less uh, powerful of a starting position in combat due to having to wait for one guy to come in as reinforcements. Okay, 50 dust. We've moved, uh, we've moved on to a, a new portion of the game, a new, uh, a new era, and so the ruins, uh, ruin outputs have been upgraded. So actually, we can buy a hero right now, thanks to all this dust that we just found. Edra the Listener is available. That's not, uh, not one of the better cultist governors. Tina the Chosen has influence boost 1. So the Cultist Tree is really powerful, but these are some pretty bad boosts, and the boosts matter a lot in the early game. Industry boost 1 is not awesome. Influence boost 2 is, like, fine, I guess? I'm actually really not excited about our options here. Lorekeeper Lacaspasar has influence boost 1. Longfangs has slavery. You know what? Actually, that's not bad. Uh, slavery is bad. Let me, let me be perfectly clear about that. But uh, the slavery ability in, uh, in this game gives plus one resource per citizen on food and industry for each pacified village in the region. Uh, and as, as such, it is pretty good in like a place where you have three... Uh, a place where you have three pacified villages, it basically is plus three industry, plus three food. That's a fine... Uh, or, sorry, it, it's per citizen assigned, obviously. But well, that's a fine, fine thing. Uh, we don't really need it right now, although maybe actually... It's taking us long enough to build things that maybe we should pull these guys back for a few turns. 
Our economy is not quite so beautiful without them, though, and we actually we we really want to stockpile dust over the next couple of turns because we're about to have to replace our, our pillars. So we'll take advantage of the uh, of the new guy's abilities in just a moment. All right, this is the turn we should get control of this fortress. I think. Yep. Good stuff. Uh, and we also have this submarine now. So let's talk to this, uh, this fortress. Maybe they'll give us something good. Ensure approval is fervent in Valdea for at least five turns for a large amount of stuff. Valdea is the capital. That's good. Unfortunately, we're pretty far off of fervent. Um, I think we probably want to pick up Central Market in the near future here. And that'll be the way we maintain our, uh, our approval ratings. Uh... It's going to be 145 dust to put down two pillars. That's actually really good for us. We have just enough money. Oh no, what was I thinking? Why was I... I was doing the math wrong. Well... We can still lay down a second pillar on this coming turn, and then just wait one turn after this expires to lay down the next group. It's a little bit less efficient, but it does keep me from uh, bogging down too much. So we'll, uh, we'll get another pillar, we'll lay it down right here, and that way it'll, uh, it'll give us four tile or five tiles of science improvement. Man, um, it's really easy, and I know, because I did this, I watched a lot of Let's Plays. Uh, before I started Let's Playing myself, it's really easy to watch somebody do something and go, why would you, what is wrong with you? Why can't you, like, do simple math or remember obvious things? But dude, it is remarkably difficult to maintain a solid line of logic in your narration and also a solid line of logic in your playing of the video game. I had to say, I was very surprised by how, how hard it turned out to be. So we will go ahead and lay down the pillar. We'll just uh, not refresh any pillars until both of these have run out. Okay, we'll worry about the, the wandering miners in a second. I wanna, I wanna deal with their village first. And we're just about to get our Megapole, we're just about to, hopefully, get control of this fortress. I think I'm probably not gonna, I'm not gonna try and do the quest. We're fanning out a little bit just to see as many tiles as possible, but I'm gonna uh, do this by force. All three of our ships should be able to move into attack range next turn. We didn't find anything in the sea run, how sad. Okay, so the industry stockpile facility uh, is... It's gotta be good. I don't think I've ever had one, but stockpiles are good, right? An unre unrevealed facility is nice. Uh, what is this? Oh, I totally forgot about that. Visit these ruins to get two free Nigga troops, which are not very good, but, I mean, there are troops. There's something to be said just for two bodies to put in a garrison to level up, or to increase the speed at which the governor of that garrison levels up, you know? So we can merge the uh, merge the ships together before in, uh, instigating combat here. Okay, we had, to, we had to go to here to avoid the lightning, but I think we're okay. Oh, actually, I'm dumb. Subs are immune to weather, I'm pretty sure, due to being under the water. So if we attack right now, we won't get our sub in the combat, and we should definitely go into the combat with maximum advantages. So we're just going to wait a turn. Search Atenol will get plus XP for her units on the way to plus initiative and plus quite a lot of life. And we're just about to get our mega pole. And with that, I think, end the video because uh, we're over an hour already. But it doesn't always feel that long when you're actually playing it, you know? I get very involved. But basically, this is like an amazing start. Things are going really well. I'm not going to bother trying to merge the sub into the attack group because I want it to have more movement to take off in another direction after the attack. Alright. Do I want to wait for the sub or do I want to just rush in with these guys? I think the answer is just rush in. We don't need the sub. Although maybe I should... How fast are you? Oof. Not that fast. I'm debating not leading with this guy, letting this guy um, 
sit off for the first turn in the hopes of getting a one shot. There's no way I deal 82 damage though. Ah, uh, let's just get him. Okay, 29 hertz. Now we can we can have this guy bail out. He doesn't need to take any more damage. There we go. Okay. That's good information right there. Oh, it revealed both of the other fortresses to us. Interesting. I believe that it doesn't usually work like that. I think... I think... It, is there some other reason I... Because I really thought it only revealed one to you when you took over. Well, whatever. I'm certainly not upset about it. Okay, so he is a functioning insomniac. He got his level from finishing the Megapole. And now we are, in fact, going to reassign him to Warden, which is the city that needs a little bit of love. And let's get our extractors built. Uh, now that we have our pillars up, I'm fine moving people back to industry for a little while. Uh, we'll just we'll just wait a little bit on the on the heroes. That's fine. And you need to grab these. Okay, and I think with that, we're going to call the video here. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you're enjoying the series as much as I'm enjoying making it. If you are, you know, likes and comments, all that YouTube stuff is very helpful. You've heard other people say it. You know the deal. Oh, we can see what blue is. Blue is... Oh my god, blue's forgotten, I think. Okay, that's a problem. We're going to have to deal with them sooner. Sooner rather than later. Uh, anyway, as I was saying, thanks for watching. Come back next time. We're taking over this massive ocean region and then the rest of the world. And we'll see you then.